Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are doing another die mine ink set uh, from uh, samples from Pole Prediction. Today the set is the flower set. Now this set does come as a box set of uh, 10 30 ml uh, bottles of these inks, uh, but Pole Prediction have put them together into a little sample set here. Uh, taking a 2ml sample of each of the inks, uh, so you can try it out at a sort of a more um, affordable way. Uh, so there are 10 uh, inks in the set, uh, and as I said, 2ml sample vials. The inks uh, that this set contains are Aster, Bougainvillea, Burgundy Rose, Carnation, Cornflower, Gerbera, Iris, Marigold, Pansy and Tulip. So um, a nice range of flowers, a nice range of colours. Um, Pole Prediction is a retailer here in Australia. Uh, they're online uh, and they're Australia's, one of Australia's uh, now major diamine stockists uh, with some of the most affordable diamine prices in Australia. Um, I'll go over that a little bit uh, later. So we have the diamine flower set here. Um, let's have a look at them and uh, start talking about these inks. So here we have the inks on Tomo River paper. This is an Alaya note notebook with a uh, 52 gram Tomo River paper. Shows up the shading and the sheen and all those things nicely. I'll also put a color corrected image just over here uh, when we get to each ink. So let's start. First we have Aster. Aster is a nice sort of royal blue sort of color. It's got some nice shading and it does have a little bit of sheen occasionally depending on the paper it's on. Then Bougainvillea, which is a very nice pink magenta colour uh, and once again some nice sort of um, gold sheen coming up on, on that. Um, this is a, a lovely sort of, um, I think it's actually quite a nice sort of performing ink. It does feel very nice on the paper. Then we have Burgundy Rose which is a, a nice um, brown burgundy. Uh, and once again, some, a lot of these inks have a nice little bit of um, sheen to them. This one shades really nicely. You get some nice sort of pink undertones coming through, which is really nice in this ink. Then we have Carnation, which is the pink of the set really. Uh, and it's a nice dusty pink. It's not too vibrant. Um, it's a little light perhaps for everyday writing, but some of the darker shading is really beautiful there. Then we have Cornflower, which is a very nice blue. This is a slightly darker blue than Aster uh, and a bit more vibrant, a bit more goldy uh, copper sheen. Um, but once again, shades nicely from a sort of a nice sort of dark royal to actually quite a, a nice saturated blue uh, and performs really nicely as well. Then we have Gerbera, which is orange, which is a nice, so once again, there's a couple of these colors are quite nice and dusty. It's got a sort of a dusty overtone to it. Um, it's not a vibrant orange, uh, which I really like. It's sort of got some nice depth to it there. Then Iris, which is a, a blue purple. It looks more purple on Tomo River than it'll say on Rhodia, where it looks just a bit more sapphire blue. Uh, and uh, nice sheen, nice shading, some beautiful shading there. Once again, dusty purple sort of coming through in the shading, which is really, really lovely. Uh, Marigold, which is yellow, orange, beautiful shading. Not not a depth of shading like, say, Robert Oster Peach or Noodles Apache Sunset or something like that, uh, but does shade from a nice yellow through to sort of quite a warm orange colour. And I think that this this verges on being, not maybe not for everyday writing, but quite usable. I um, actually really love this combination of iris and marigold next to each other. I think that looks beautiful. And then the final two inks in this set are Pansy, which is a nice dusty dark purple with beautiful gold sheen. Um, really lovely uh, ink actually, beautiful color, beautiful performance, yeah, really lovely. Uh, and then one of my personal favorites from the set is Tulip, which is an orangey red. It's not super, super red, uh, but it's certainly on the in the red family. Um, it's got some nice little sheen there, shades beautifully. Once again, performs really well. One of my favorites from the set. So that's them on Tomo River paper. Um, let's now look at them on a couple of other paper and I'll show just a couple of little uh, comparisons perhaps. 
So next I wanted to show it here on copier paper. This is everyday copy paper uh, that you would use in your office printer. It's 80 gram copy paper. This is Reflex brand, uh, which is sort of the standard brand here in Australia. Um, the inks actually show their color beautifully on this paper. Um, you lose a bit of the shading. There is a bit of, you know, feathering and stuff like that, like cornflower feathers there are a bit, burgundy rose feathers, bougainvillea does. Um, they all don't perform to their best on this paper, but this isn't fountain pen friendly paper. But I do think the colors are quite nice. Um, and so sort the of vibrancy of a few of those colors really comes out. But yes, there is a bit of feathering. And of course on this paper, there is a bit of bleed. Um, but being diamine inks, they are very safe uh, and they do perform well, uh, you know, on fountain pen friendly paper. You'll see them on Rodeo in a second. You've seen them on Tomo River. There's no bleeding, there's no feathering, shading and sheen are, are nice and apparent. Um, but yes, on this copy paper, you can see the colors look great. A little flat perhaps, but they look great. And you know, in a fine nib, uh, you know, sort of uh, with careful use, you could probably get away with it on this paper. Um, if you really needed to. So now we have the almost infamous Rhodia page where I you know, hit the water with some ink, I do some swabs and some writing. Um, let's just have a quick look at the reverse side so you can see that with the writing and even with the swabs, not a lot sort of comes through uh, with these inks. Um, it actually takes putting down quite a lot of ink, like here with the marigold, for it to actually break through it all. Uh, and from the writing, from the water sample, nothing has come through. Um, but it is here I'll do some uh, colour comparisons uh, and just show um, what the ink can sort of do. Okay, so we start here with Asta, which is a nice sort of light royal blue. When it's hit with water, it moves around a bit, but there is a little bit that is sort of left behind there, which is uh, encouraging to see. Um, comparisons I've made here, these are all, all the comparisons I will make, are from Diamine. Uh, and what I put here is royal blue and sapphire blue. Uh, so you can see it's quite similar to royal blue, um, but yes, it's not quite exactly the same, but sort of some nice shading that is quite similar there. Next, we have um, Bougainvillea, which is one of my favorite colors of the set. I like this uh, pink fuchsia uh, sort of magenta color. A lot of it does move around. You lose a lot of the definition from the water, um, but it does remain a nice pink. Now, in my collection, I couldn't find anything that looked exactly uh, the same as this. Um, so what I, just to show you sort of where it sits, I've just got Syrah and Hot Pink here. Uh, as I said, from my Diamond collection, there are colors uh, that are similar, uh, but you can see there that it's not quite a pink. It's, and you know, if I, even if I bring up a purple here, like Majestic Purple, uh, you can see sort of where it sits in the middle uh, of that um, as well. Next we have burgundy rose, which as I said is a nice sort of brown burgundy. And for me, uh, the ink I pulled up is a sort of a sample of this one is Syrah. Uh, once again, uh, there's a lot of similarities there in the colors. With the water here, we lost a bit of the definition, but you can still read it, uh, but it's a nice, it's sort of maintained a nice sort of like little wash uh, of the ink there from that, uh, from that water test. Uh, and following up from that, we have Carnation, which as I said, is a nice dusty pink, which is really beautiful. Uh, it's got some nice sort of brownie tones coming through and some of the shading there. The water test, it actually performed fairly well. Uh, it moved around a bit and we were able to sort of get a nice bit of a wash, uh, but you did manage to keep some of the definition there, but you do get sort of a brownie color sort of coming through in that. And once again, just for the examples to show like the dusty nature of it, this is it alongside Hope Pink, uh, which, um, shows just that it's a nice sort of brownie pink in that carnation color. Following on from that, we have cornflower now, which uh, is, I think, quite a nice sort of darker blue. It's certainly darker than sort of royal blue. Um, and uh, next to that, we'll just put majestic blue and sapphire blue, so you can see sort of where it sits nicely between uh, all of these colors. It's quite close to sapphire. Um, but it's got some nice sort of sheen and stuff as well. Now, when the water hit this, because this is a relatively saturated ink, it did wash around a lot, um, and even the wash had some nice sort of shading. Uh, there's sort of a purpley sort of colour that is left behind uh, with some sort of grey coming through, which, uh, but you can still, I think you'd still be able to read that. And with these, I just put like 
I, uh, you know, sort of put some water down, swirl it around a little bit, let it sit for a second, and then just dabbed it up with paper towel. So, you know, um, you could use water brushes and things like that with these things, uh, no doubt. In fact, this whole set would be really lovely uh, for people doing sort of ink art with colours and things, because you've got a nice range of colours, but also um, they do sort of wash around a little bit for the most part. Next is Gerbera, the lovely uh, orange here. Uh, and for this one, I just wanted to show, uh, firstly, just dye mine orange to show that it is that sort of darker orange, but it's not as dark as something like blood orange, which has a lot of brown in it as well. Um, so it's it's still a, a very clearly an orange, uh, but not that sort of vibrant orange like dye mine orange. Um, but this one lost a lot of its definition. It was really moved around and picked up uh, in the water test. Uh, but yes, it's... You know, it's a good performing ink uh, and uh, looks really lovely on the page. Dymine Iris now. Um, and uh, not quite a purple. Um, like if we look at it alongside like Majestic Purple, you can see it's definitely not a purple. But if we look, long, uh, look at it alongside Sapphire Blue, we see there's a lot more purple in it than, uh, than say, a true sort of sapphire. Um, it's a lovely, lovely ink. I really enjoy this. Um, I think it's got good performance qualities. It uh, certainly uh, looks lovely on the page. In terms of the water test, there's definition still left behind. You could easily read that, um, but there's a nice little bit of wash there of color um, and some nice sort of gold sheen. So lots to like about uh, Iris there. Marigold is an interesting one. As I said, it does shade from like quite a vibrant yellow through to sort of a nice warm orange. Um, but in the writing, it's actually quite readable, which is really nice. The water test shows that like most of it is taken up. There's not a lot of uh, color left behind there, and that's fine. It's you know these are not document inks, um, but you know you do lose a lot of that one. For the sake of this uh, exercise, here it is alongside amber uh, and uh, orange there. So you can see it's. Um, very much a, on the in the yellow family, a little bit darker than amber, not quite as vibrant and orange as orange. Uh, last, uh, oh not last, last two shall we say, uh, Pansy. So Pansy with the water test was a nice one, nice wash on that, a little bit of def definition left behind. Uh, these are not water resistant inks as I said, but and they're not waterproof, but you know some of them do give you a little bit of hope that if you did get your document wet that you'd be able to still see it, but they also show that as I said, for artwork, this, these inks would perform quite nicely. Um, it's a lovely dusty purple, uh, and you can see it's quite dark, and the shading is very, very dark, uh, which is good, I think. Um, it's nice, uh, but it's a true purple, uh, not a, a sort of a, like, majestic purple, um, but certainly darker also than, say, something like uh, Amethyst, Amazing Amethyst, uh, which is a dusty purple, but not quite as dark as Pansy here. Now, Pansy is an interesting one, just deviating slightly from dye mine for a second. Um, Pansy is one of those inks that people often suggest as a um, as an option to replace Lamy Dark Lilac uh, because it's got that sort of depth to it. And when you see it alongside Lamy Dark Lilac, I think you can see some of the similarities as to why. Um, there's certainly there's certainly a lot of depth in there um, and some of the the shading is, the dusty shading is the same, but I think that la Dark Lilac has just a little bit more vibrancy in some of the purple uh, that Pansy doesn't have, but it's a very close you know, comparison. If you were desperate for Dark Lilac uh, and you just wanted an ink that you could you know, sort of use daily basis, then probably Pansy would be not too terrible an option. And then the last ink here is Tulip. Uh, now, Tulip is, I said, an orangey red, um, not super orange, uh, but if you see it alongside Poppy Red, for instance, you can see there's a little bit more orange there, but obviously when you see it alongside orange, you see a lot of red there. Um, it's a nice ink. I really like this ink. I think it's a beautiful colour, a little bit of gold sheen. You do lose most of it, uh, but you can see where you have uh, not quite sort of saturated it quite so much. Uh, there's a nice little bit of wash and it moves around a little bit quite nicely there. Um, so, you know, pretty solid uh, inks and pretty solid performances. Um, you know, better than I sort of anticipated and certainly better, I think, uh, than um, some other dye inks, particularly in terms of something like this definition that's left behind uh, and some of the colors that uh, we get to sort of see 
uh, when we do use water resistance. Um, but as far as you know, performance goes, you can see the inks look lovely on the Rodia. The colors are vibrant. There's no feathering, there's no bleed. Um, even the water resistance, as I said, works out quite well. So there's lots, lots, lots uh, to like about these inks on Rodia, on other, uh, on other papers uh, like Tomo River. So let's quickly talk a couple of things about uh, the Diamine Ink Flower set um, and about what Pulp Prediction have. So Pulp Prediction, as I said, are Australia, one of Australia's most affordable retailers for Diamine. The standard inks run at a couple of dollars less per bottle uh, than most retailers are able to stock them. Um, and they do stock the flower set as the individual 30 mil plastic bottles. Now, when you buy the flower set as a set, um, and I couldn't find it on the Pulp Prediction website, so I will quote Colt Pens because I think that internationally, Colt Pens is one of the best retailers for Dime Mine. Uh, they are in the UK and they have a, a really, really great range of Dime Mine inks. They retail at the whole set retails at Colt Pens for around the uh, 90 Australian mark, and that's 10 30 mil bottles. They're glass bottles, they're sort of little square ones, not like the, the plastic diamond bottles that we have here. Um, but uh, and they retail for $12.95 for 30 mils. They also sell the samples individually for $2.95, and that's a two mil sample, um, like I've shown here. Uh, you get the, the that is the full set, but the, the individual sample uh, is a two mil sample vial like this. Uh, and it says, uh, you know, the ink, the name, and then pulpediction.com.au. So if you're interested in looking at them, that's where you can go. Um, and that, so they're two ninety five dollars each, or the set for 10 inks is twenty eight ninety five. So there is a little sort of saving to buy the full set uh, if you wanted to do that. Um, I think this is a really lovely set. I think it's got a beautiful range of colours. They're not your standard reds and blues. There's a little bit of interest to them. And um, I think that they have enough uh, depth of colour for most of them for everyday writing, particularly like if you're looking at, at this particular page down the left side here. Um, but even like Bougainvillea and even Tulip could be used, you know, certainly uh, for, you know, particular tasks, you know, sort of uh, maybe not for like all your writing, but for headers or underlining, stuff like that, if that's what you're using it for. Or as I said, for art. I think it's a it'd make a beautiful sort of art set. Um, so... And really interesting set. I think if you're interested in looking at the inks, check out uh, Pulp Addiction um, and check out uh, you know, your local retailers as well. But Pulp Addiction have um, amazing prices on Dime Mine, not just these inks, but all the Dime Mine inks. Um, so check them out and check out uh, the samples that they have and the sample sets they have on offer. I've done a couple of sample sets where I've compared reds and blues and I've got a few more of those uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, But today we're looking at the flower set, which are... Uh, um, yeah, it's a set made by Diamine and put into little samples here by Pulp Addiction. So I'll just quickly run through them once again and um, I'll just show here, I'll also just quickly show like what the flower looks like so you can see how the Diamine have captured uh, the, the colour. So we've got Aster, Bougainvillea, Burgundy Rose, Carnation, Cornflower, Gerbera, Iris, Marigold, Pansy, and Tulip. Ten lovely inks, ten lovely flowers, uh, and yeah, just a really nice range uh, of inks. So thank you for watching. Um, please like uh, and subscribe and hit the notifications button, all that stuff. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, you can contact me in any of my videos here or drop me an email. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel, get in touch. Um, it, you know, it's, it's through support from you know people like you, um, and you know providing items for review or sponsoring reviews that make this channel possible. So thank you so much. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.